So welcome everyone to my unboxing video for my new Foldertech FT6 3D printer. Uh, I was actually looking for a large format dual extruder printer and Foldertech uh, is actually a US company that builds printers similar to what you could buy out of China but being US sourced you can hope for a little more support. And so when they told me they were going to release this, uh, they actually released it at Thanksgiving, and I pre-ordered one. It was scheduled to arrive later this week, but actually arrived uh, Christmas Eve. So UPS uh, did a good job of getting things here before the holiday, although this did not weather the trip very well. Uh, we can only hope that it's actually packed internally well enough to have survived the treatment it got along the trip because the box is in pretty bad shape as you can tell. Now, as I said, uh, this is a large format printer and uh, you know had to resist the temptation of trying to put it together on Christmas Day given that I needed to actually create space for it. And so as you can see now, I've got my old Robo 3D here and this is going to take over a meter worth of desktop space. So right now, from the edge of the robo to the edge of the desk, uh, that printer is going to take up all of that space. So I can only hope that the cable for the printer is not in the way, because I'm pretty much out of room to slide that robo over any further uh, and still be able to have the computer up. Uh, so, as we go through this, I'll be taking pictures and pausing this, so let's get the box open and take a look inside, see how it weathered the trip. Alright, so we have the box open, and as you can see, uh, first off, this is just a single-ply cardboard box, not really intended to hold the amount of weight uh, that this printer has. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head right now how much this whole thing weighs but it's at least 50 pounds uh, so a lot of paper wrapping though so hopefully things survived well let's take and start digging into it and see what we got and first thing we see are all of the machined uh, this is actually I believe um, composite aluminum so it should be an aluminum skin with a uh, plastic material in between and that is all then machined so if you look at the edge you can see how you've got the two layers of aluminum on the outside edge and material in between so that's uh, basically aircraft material uh, is where they originally created that and so it makes it very light but extremely strong so uh, you know nice design still has all the uh, plastic on it to keep it from scratching. You'll peel that off as you assemble. And so let's dig a little deeper. Alright, so taking out the uh, machine components off the top, then we see our uh, bed for the FT6, which is uh, the bed plate says water jetted, so that's how they machined it, uh, with a silicone heat pad. Um, and the one thing I noticed as I started to pull out all the machine parts is there's still a lot of machine dust uh, and you can see it's still embedded in the tape but I, having just cleaned up everything to be able to do this uh, I grabbed the vacuum and vacuumed as much of the loose parts off as I could as I pulled it out. So after the next thick layer of packing paper that I'll have to sift through later to make sure there's nothing stuck in it now we have all of the remaining parts and what looks like a packing list. Uh, so you've got cable bundles, uh, power supply. Uh, I went for the full-blown kit, so this has the 7-inch LCD uh, as well as the dual extruder setup. Um, and of course you can see all the rails and everything. So we'll start pulling these out and compare them against the checklist and eventually start trying to assemble this thing. So here's the checklist. Gives you an idea of the list of parts. Uh, basically it's nice to see them actually putting that together and I'm just realizing the camera's upside down. Alright, hopefully the gravity sensor worked that time. So here's the checklist. Gives you an idea of just what they 
include in the kit and how they label it all. Uh, so comes up to a checksum of 40,000. Interesting approach. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Uh, so we've got the stepper motors. And let's turn it this way so that you can actually read this well. And we've got the electronics kit. Let's go ahead and pull that out. The board, heat sinks, and stop, and a bed thermistor. As mentioned before, we've got the 7-inch LCD. The wiring kit. And plenty of dust on it. Power supply. Miscellaneous kit. Another heat sink, power socket for AC. So yes, this is a very raw system. Normally you'd expect to see that going straight into your uh, DC power supply, but in this case, given that they also, I believe the bed is actually a 110 volt bed, uh, you're going to have to be doing some AC wiring with this. So that takes a little beyond what some people may be comfortable with because you are dealing with potentially dangerous voltages if you don't do it correctly. A uh, lot more little machine parts in here. Uh, as well as the bars, here's our belts and pulleys, or at least a belt and pulley. A sample filament. Yeah, I don't need that. I've got boxes full, but nice anyway. All of the hardware. All metric. All right. Definitely we'll need that. A miscellaneous unlabeled bag. That's interesting. That's kind of out of place for everything else they've done here. Where you can at least see the parts. We'll toss this on our pile of large parts. As well as this. Oh, and jelly beans. So, either that's a treat for when you get the job finished, or somebody with a sweet tooth uh, dropped it in while they were working. Power cord rods, main beams, more rails, and that looks like about it. We'll check everything against the list and we'll open this up and see what's in that unidentified box. Okay, so having laid everything out and sorted through it, uh, we have identified most everything on the checklist. There are a few things that the names don't quite line up with what they are, but for the most part, what you're looking for is you'll see the number under the barcode. That's really the best identifier uh, against the item code list here. Uh, but like you'll see with the one where I wrote vertical there, that's for these vertical beams that they just call the long beam. Uh, so the descriptions just don't match all the time. And the other thing here on 1097, the barcode was actually wrapped underneath, so it was hard to see the number. Now, you'll notice I have one thing unchecked, ACM. So is that the machine components over here on the floor? Or is that this stuff in this unknown bag or the LCD? The LCD obviously does not have a barcode, and since that is an option, uh, presumably that has something to do with it. What I am assuming we have here, given everything else in the list, this must be the extruders. Now, the one thing, opening the bag, I have another unlabeled bag, and some circuit boards inside uh, regular bubble wrap. Hopefully there are no ESD sensitive components on there, given that that circuit board, uh, you know, that's not pink ESD protected uh, bubble wrap. So 
if it was static sensitive then it could be blown and digging inside that bag we have yet another sealed bag uh, as well as obvious Bowden components you've got the uh, tubes for feeding the uh, fiber uh, you've got a hot end this actually appears to be a single tip dual fiber hot end so that is not exactly what I was expecting uh, this is supposed to be a complete dual extruder arrangement not a dual feed single extruder uh, it may be okay we'll just have to see how that turns out uh, what I don't know is what's in the other bag yet okay so not surprising in the bag are the two stepper motors for driving the extruders um, however like I say this is not exactly what I was expecting because I wanted a full dual extruder uh, capable of printing two completely separate uh, components uh, here we'll have the issue of transition between the two materials now granted it should allow for mixed material printing which is a cool feature uh, but not exactly what I was looking for so that's a little disappointing so bagging all the Bowden components back up temporarily I wanted to go ahead and take a quick look at this orange pie uh, kit that we got uh, this is uh, an add-on or an extra uh, option in terms of having the larger display and since the pictures weren't very clear on the website I wanted to see just what we have so what you've got here is looks like an HDMI cable presumably feeds the display from the orange pie board USB cable a DC to DC power supply uh, these I actually have and then some sticky tape for sticking everything on I've built things with these myself um, they're basically just adjustable with this pot always makes me a little nervous just as to how stable those are long term but they seem to be pretty common uh, so and so far I've not had problems with the one I've used and of course this is all wrapped up may have to pause versus trying to tear this tape one-handed, but we'll even see. Sorry about that. But this appears to just be a very simple display board. Presumably packaged this way from the manufacturer. You notice the pink bubble wrap. That indicates that that is actually supposed to be anti-static. And it's just a bare bones board. I doubt there's any sort of special housing for it that we will see. Uh, and as you can see, it just has an HDMI input. And that's it. So it'll be interesting to see how this all goes together when I get to that stage, which is going to be about the last. So at this point, I think we're done unboxing everything. Seems like, other than that one unknown item that presumably covers one of these things, that's the end of the box and given the structural strength of the components and the abundance of paper packing it seems like that while the box is not very good and really could be a double layer box just to be able to survive shipping because it really was literally falling apart looks like uh, UPS probably added additional packing tape to it in the process uh, so that's the one recommendation I would have for Folger Tech is to go to a little better box than what they're shipping. Uh, but otherwise, it looks like it made it here okay. So now we get to try to figure out how to put it together. Hope you enjoyed this video and look for the completion of the printer. Thank you.